think leaders are defined by their their darkest moments, the times that call for leadership and call for them to step up, not their finest moments. When we come back, you'll hear what communications director says is the line of logic that might finally be able to snap the Trumpist spell. That's when we come back. Now, even after attempting to overturn an election on the back of a big lie, Donald Trump remains the front runner for the next Republican nomination for president. The Times interviewing more than 50 Democratic officials, and some are doubting the president's ability to rescue the party from a potential midterm blowout, citing his age and other issues. A current DNC member summing it up this way, quote, to say our country was on the right track would flagrantly depart from reality. Biden should announce his intent not to seek re-election in 24, right after the midterms. Oh, that's my prediction date, right, Jesse? Oh, it is. All right, President Biden getting no mercy from younger members of his party. Listen to what Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has to say about a second term. Trump remains the front runner for the next Republican nomination for president. Trump remains the front runner for the next Republican nomination for president. I've been on CNN plenty of times uh, in, in other networks as well to talk about the danger that the former president, Trump, still poses to democracy. He is saying he's going to run again in 2024. Will you support him? If the president has a vision, and that's something certainly we're all willing to entertain and examine when the, when the time comes. That's not a yes. I think that uh, given the events of January 6th, given how he has undermined the election results, he incited people to come to D.C., stirred them up that morning, and failed to call them off, to me, that threatens our democracy. So, yes. I think the answer would that. What else can you conclude, Brett? Hey. Yeah, you know, I think uh, we should okay. endorse when we get to it. In fact, CNN has reported that more than 30 former senior Trump administration staffers have held conference calls to discuss how to stop him from being president again because they think he is dangerously unfit for the office. Democrats set on dumping President Biden can point to a laundry list of reasons national... That's in addition to the more than dozen senior officials who denounced him during his administration, including... Gas prices have skyrocketed to over $5 a gallon. Americans are feeling the impact of inflation, hitting on everything from shelter to medical care. And some in the media fear it's just too late for things to turn around. But a growing number have been standing up and speaking out. Take a listen. I want people to understand who he is. He cares about no one but himself. I've been on CNN plenty of times. So. But that number of supporters notably... Does and you've seen him change his tone a little bit when talking about inflation. He cares about no one but himself. I've been on CNN plenty of times uh, in, in other networks as well to talk about the danger that... Because in the beginning, a lot of Democrats were saying, hey, look, the economy, it's doing great. It's the best in you know record number of years. And people weren't feeling that. People were saying, why are you telling me it's good when all these prices are going up? So you I want people to understand who he is. He cares about no one but himself. I've been on CNN plenty of times. We are starting to see Democrats shift the messaging a little bit to talk more about and have that empathy, but whether that... But that number of supporters notably... Is a little too late. We're still a couple months away, but it could be a little too late for a lot of these people who are saying, we need help now. I think leaders are defined by their their darkest moments, the times that call for leadership and call for them to step up, not their finest moments. All right, you can see how this is going to go, Jesse. Yeah. The now, these are the people in his inner circle. But that number of supporters notably does not include some of the people who are normally the most loyal to a president because they know the man the best. New York Times writes a piece like this. And there will be 10 more pieces like that in other media before next Sunday. So this story is going to last for a while. The difference is... is in his inner circle. Not Republicans saying Biden shouldn't run again. Now the calls are coming from inside the House. Once in his inner circle. Well, I don't know why it took so long for Democrats to figure out Joe couldn't cut it. It was really people who were in a position... Of Once in his inner circle. ...public trust who had an obligation to the American people just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. I mean, but you have Afghanistan, gas prices, inflation. He missed two surges, Omicron and Delta. 
didn't get build back better past. I mean, I know the guy couldn't cut it when he tripped up the steps three times. But boy, if he really believes this stuff, he has become detached from reality. I want people to understand who he is. He cares about no one but himself. And now the Democrats, according to the Times, are saying, oh, we're so concerned about Biden not being able to rescue the Democrats. How about being able to rescue the country? No it was really people who are in a position of public trust who had an obligation to the American people just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. That but when you attack our democracy, try to overthrow the electoral process and disenfranchise 80 million voters, you, 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 you lose the right to ever be president again. Because they're so concerned about their hold on power, not how well the country's doing. And and he's shown time and time again that he's always willing to put his political ambitions or goals or what he wants ahead of what's best for the country as well as our alliances abroad. I agreed with 75% of his policies. And it's pretty lame for the Democrats to point their fingers at Joe Biden. This is everything the Democrats campaigned on. I want people to understand who he is. He cares about no one but himself. But boy, if he really believes this stuff, he has become detached from reality. It was really people who are in a position of public trust, who had an obligation to the American people, just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. That they campaigned on getting rid of fossil fuels. They campaigned on opening up the border. This is all the Democrats doing. But boy, if he really believes this stuff, he has become detached from reality. It was really people who are in a position of public trust, who had an obligation to the American people, just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. That I want people to understand who he is. He cares about no one but himself. To turn around and point the finger at Joe, that's like Joe pointing the finger at Putin. I think leaders are defined by their their darkest moments, the times that call for leadership and call for them to step up, not their finest moments. And he's shown time and time again that he's always willing to put his political ambitions or goals or what he wants ahead of what's best for the country as well as our alliances abroad. That's what they campaigned on. And if they hadn't, Look what they would have done with $6 trillion more. If they had had their way, they would have taken away our rifles. Think of but boy, if he really believes this stuff, he has become detached from reality. But when you attack our democracy, try to overthrow the electoral process and disenfranchise 80 million voters, you, 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 you lose the right to ever be president again. Think about how worse it could have gotten. But boy, if he really believes this stuff, he has become detached from reality. Right now, the Democrats are lucky. But boy, if he really believes this stuff, he has become detached from reality. And AOC is coming out. She reminds me of the girl at prom. You know, you ask a girl to prom and she goes, yeah. And we need to build trust. We need to make the point, you know, Republicans like myself, we need to make the point that it's bigger than any one man. We share their values. We want to hear their voices. But they, they, they cannot, they cannot, if they care about the future of this country, continue to support. Um. Well, um, <laughs> you know, he's got a nice personality. Um, I'm more focused on finals right now. She was waiting for a better offer. <laughs> right, right. For that individual. Now, you've said very clearly that Trump does not deserve to serve in the White House again. Why do you think a second Trump term would be a threat to the republic? You know, when it gets closer to prom, maybe we'll take a look at it. But notice. Joining me today to discuss this is one of those former senior Trump staffers, CNN contributor and former White House Director of Strategic Communications, Alyssa Farah Griffin. It was really people who are in a position of public trust. Her language, she goes, who had an obligation to the American people, just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. I think leaders are defined by their, their darkest moments, the times that call for leadership and call for them to step up, not their finest moments. We'll take a look at it. And that he's always willing to put his political ambitions or goals or what he wants ahead of what's best for the country as well as our alliances abroad. She's speaking for the entire left wing of the party. We will take a look at it. And I think the times that call for leadership and call for them to step up, not their finest moments. What's going to happen? The Democrats are going to get shredded in the midterms and AOC is going to come in with a knife and just stab him right there, and he's done it. Boy, if he really believes this stuff, he has become detached from reality. And he's shown time and time again that he's always willing to put his political ambitions or goals or what he wants ahead of what's best for the country as well as our alliances abroad. And I just think that makes him unfit. And if he does try, 
to run for re-election. They're going to primary the guy. And you know what happens when the incumbent gets primaried? Look what happened to Carter, much weakened, and then even Bush 41 had the, the third-party action. The New York Times reports that several times last year, the president privately said he wanted to withdraw from NATO, the 70-year-old military alliance designed to protect Europe from aggression by leaders like Putin. You all and that's just not good. And the he was trying to disenfranchise you know, tens of millions of voters that were not, in fact, the results of the election. And that's just not good. And the, it's funny that the Times comes out and does this because they didn't want Joe to begin with. Remember, they wanted a woman. He's always willing to put his political ambitions or goals or what he wants ahead of what's best for the country. He was trying to disenfranchise, you know, tens of millions of voters. And I just think that makes him unfit. And they endorsed well, they endorsed two women. Yeah, they and Warren. The psychology of they're coming after him, they're coming after me. Stood by allowed our capital to be assaulted. So now they're saying, yeah, yeah, let's get rid of the guy, but you know. There should be a peaceful transition of power and it's time to move on. I, I'm, I'm relishing how this is gonna play out. I want people to understand who he is. He cares about no one but himself. The, the psychology of they're coming after him, they're coming after me, and we need to build trust. We need to make the point, you know, Republicans like myself, we need to make the point that it's bigger than any one man. We share their values. We want to hear their voices. And I just think that makes them unfit. And I want to play you a clip and then get your reaction. January 6th attack was not the Republicans nor Trump. It was the Democrats were behind it all. Would you like to see Trump run again? Absolutely. Because Trump won the election. They, 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 they've proven it over and over again. Here's my question. How do you understand that so many people who have never met Donald Trump feel such passionate loyalty to him, almost a religious devotion, and yet they've never met the man, let alone worked for him? And how do you think you can convince them? It's a huge uphill battle. And John, I've had to deal with this, you know, within my own extended family. I think many Americans have where there's, they're trying to reach them and say. AOC may, might not just be talking about the left wing, Jessica, but also young people. So I saw some numbers today showing that he's just absolutely bleeding support from young, from young people. What are you hearing? You know, I know this man. I, I know personally what he's like. I've seen him interact with staff and the way he makes decisions. It's not this, this hero that you think he is. But we just have to keep trying to break through. Um, it was really people who are in a position of public trust, who had an obligation to the American people, just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. That Young people, Gen Z's more than millennials, don't like politics at all. <laughs> Sarah Longwell did a, a very interesting focus group, and it, it showed that the more that people pushed back against the big lie, many Trump supporters felt like they actually believed it more because they just don't like the two party system. They have issues that they care about and then they're going to look for people that represent them well on those issues, which is why when they do vote, they tend to vote liberal because they believe climate change is man made and they want criminal justice reform, et cetera. Uh, but they, they, they cannot they cannot, if they care about the future of this country, continue to support. So January 6th, an attack on our democracy. Uh, the, the president came up short. The people who are in a position of public trust, who had an obligation to the American people, just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. That January 6th, an attack on our democracy, uh, the, the president came up short. She's definitely speaking about a real problem, but AOC does this constantly and she falls in line. It was really people who are in a position of public trust who had an obligation to the American people. I mean, she was one of the strongest Bernie Sanders surrogates. She fell in line and then became a huge champion uh, for President Biden on the campaign trail. It was really people who are in a position of public trust who had an obligation to the American people. I would not say the same thing about Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar, but AOC is the most politically savvy, I would say, of the squad. And she knows that if she wants the right committee assignments, if she wants to make sure that she stays in prime time, that she's gonna have to fall in line there. But what's going on? And what was interesting to me about the, that clip you played of, of all these officials um, who I have relationships with and think very highly of is we're all saying the same thing. As there are progressive qualms with what he's doing, but it's the moderates that I think are actually more of an issue. The people who really wanted 
Joe Biden to be the choice during the primary. And then once he got into power, because we worked with him, we knew him, and we are telling you, America, this man is unfit to be president. And as we lost the election, second term would be more dangerous than a first. <laughs> it was really people who were in a position of public trust, who had an obligation to the American people, just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. They're having to answer questions about rhetoric that you know, doesn't speak for them or their districts, you know, people are certain it's time to move on. They'll bring you up, what about defund the police? They're dealing with inflation. They want to talk about, you know, how the everyday guy is feeling about the gas. People who are in a position of public trust, who had an obligation to the American people, just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. The prices and what's going on at the grocery store and feels like the party is off track with that and that Biden has tacked too far to the left. And then the left doesn't feel like he's gone yeah. far enough. Um, so he's getting it from both sides, but all, all indications. If, if he loses more support from the left judge, his numbers could go even lower because that's yeah. actually helping bolster him right now, and the numbers are pretty low. Just want to play one piece of sound because there's a producer on our show who loves it. <laughs> it happened today. Biden on whether he's going to Saudi Arabia. Wow. Gotcha. Love this. Sir, whether to go to Saudi Arabia? No, not yet. What would be the... January 6th uh, attack was not a Republican that Laura Trump it was the Democrats were behind it. That's all. the reason like I'm Trump going. Run again? Absolutely. Is Trump won the election. For them, for they, 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 they've proven it over and over. Anyway, it has to do with much larger issues than having to do with the energy. Here's my question. How do you understand that so many people who have never met Donald Trump feel such passionate loyalty to him, almost a religious devotion? And yet they've never met the man, let alone work for him. And how do you think you can convince them? Is he going? Is he not going? Just well, I don't have anything to announce for you today. I feel a little sorry for her. It's a huge uphill battle. And John, I've had to deal with this, you know, within my own extended family. I think many Americans have where there's, they're trying to reach them and say. You've said very clearly that Trump does not deserve to serve in the White House again. Why do you think a second Trump term would be a threat to the republic? Because when there's when you can't announce a meeting yet, then you're dancing around. But the the fact I feel a little sorry for her. The the fact because when there's when you can't announce a meeting yet, then you're dancing around. But the the fact the the fact that he's even going to Saudi Arabia and willing to basically go against what he said in the campaign, but not willing to open up more here in America is pretty stunning to people. It does not make sense to me that a conservative or a Republican shouldn't be able to have a positive relationship with a Democrat. When we see our political opponents as bigger enemies than America's adversaries, we have a real problem. And unfortunately, that's where our partisan politics are going right now. Um, so it makes me want to use my voice and have these challenging conversations. And then get your reaction. The, the fact you've said very clearly that none of what Joe Biden does makes any sense. And you've said very clearly that. And the, the problem is that with Joe Biden in the, the, the Democrat Party Trump does not deserve to serve in the White House again. Why do you think a second term would be a threat to the republic? What you've got is a party that is ideologically so connected. It, it's almost like a cult. OK, the, the fact that you've said very clearly that. Trump does not deserve to serve in the White House again. Why do you think a second Trump term would be a threat to the Republic? The, the fact we lost the election, there should be a peaceful transition of power. The, the fact that people who are in a position of public trust, who had an obligation to the American people, just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. The, the Democrats don't vote for Republicans, basically under any circumstances that I know of. We lost the election. There should be a peaceful transition of power, and it's time to move on. It, Republicans will vote for a Democrat. They'll criticize Donald Trump the month after he gets in. Just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. That the Democrats don't criticize Joe Biden. That's why there are all these whispers that they're talking about. Obligation to the American people, just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. That but the, the concern is this. It was really people who are in a position of public trust. In spite of the economy and inflation and everything else. And who had an obligation to the American people just rampantly the blame game and the lying to try to get the results that they wanted. The American public sees through it. They don't buy into the blame game. It's time to move on. All the American public wants to know 
Joe, what are you going to do about this? How are you going to change this? How are you going to make my life better? How are you going to make my life better? And it was really people who were in a position of public trust, who had an obligation to the American people, just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. All this guy can talk about is green energy, buying lithium batteries from China, opening up the uh, a pipeline for Russia so we can buy gas from Russia, and then, you know, just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. The only people who are in a position of public trust, who had an obligation to the American people. Making sure that he shuts down our pipeline when we just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. They also worked at the Pentagon uh, beforehand. And if there were a second Trump turn, do you have concerns that he would try to, for example, uh, leave NATO? Something that's very much in the front of people's minds now. They can't even afford to go to work, some people. They can't afford to buy food. They can't afford to buy groceries. It's just a mess here. And Joe Biden would have a better shot at it. We're in a position of public trust who had an obligation to the American people just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. That if he at least didn't depend on other countries, the OPEC country for oil, Russia opening up their pipeline, China lithium batteries. It was really people who were in a position of public trust who had an obligation to the American people just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. That your own father boycotted your wedding because you criticized Donald Trump. How did that make you feel? Everything he does puts America last. So, I mean, it's it's unfortunate, but it's honestly motivated me to just want to tackle this issue of political polarization in our country. Well, I don't care if they whisper or they don't whisper. It's over for Joe after the midterm. It's interesting that you indicated just a second ago how your relationship with your family and some friends has suffered because you've spoken out. It was really people who were in a position of public trust, who had an obligation to the American people, just rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted. That well, I don't care if they whisper or they don't whisper. It's over for Joe after the midterm. It's interesting that. Thank you for raising that. It's over for Joe after the midterm. It's interesting that a lot of the people. That is such an important point because we need nonpartisan patriots to provide continuity, to remind people that the role of government is actually not our political parties. It's about defense of our democracy and defense of the Constitution. And I, I left because I thought it was important to signal both to my staff, my team, but also to the public. Democrats suggest could be their nominee in 2024 in these whisper campaigns are all people that Joe Biden beat in the primary. So it's like, where, where is their new blood? That is such an important point because we need nonpartisan patriots to provide continuity, to remind people that the role of government is actually not our political parties. It's about defense of our democracy and defense of the Constitution. And I th they are, I, there is no new blood. That's the problem is they don't have a bench to turn to. They certainly don't have a vice president to turn to in this particular context. Now, I would say that who saw Donald Trump coming in 2014 either? So and I'll say this, like Donald Trump is destructive to all to all aspects of our, our, our social fabric and, and who we are as a country. He stokes division. It's division for profit. And I don't I think we're seeing how so many of us like you and I are seeing how destructive it is. But we've got to permeate those folks who still support him and just explain this is not good for the future. The, 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 the context of where we are right now doesn't necessarily mean that's yeah. the entire crop, but there isn't much on the bench, no doubt. This is, this is an order going out from on high, from headquarters. Yeah. When the New York Times cites 50 mostly anonymous Democratic <laughs> operatives, almost all of which say, Joe's got to go, that's a warning shot. And they know they can't say it openly before the midterms. You can't make them a lame duck right away. There's no sense in doing so. This is the preparatory fires for the inevitable... Uh, political long knives that will come out after they get crushed in the midterms. They know they need a dynamic candidate based on the crop the Republicans have. I would say the one variable to consider is the Trump factor. A second term would be more dangerous than the first. Let me, let me ask you about, because you left on December 3rd, before January 6th. Had you gotten wind of some of these plans that ultimately are coming to light right now about attempts to have fake electors and overturn the election on and around January 6th? Because what 
Biden has said is, I'm the guy to run against Trump should there be a rematch in 2024. And him and his team would, may attempt to try to make that argument. I'm not saying it's the right argument. Yeah. And he's shown time and time again that he's always willing to put his political ambitions or goals or what he wants ahead of what's best for the country as well as our alliances abroad. That would be the only rationale they would attempt to make. Do not minimize the extent to which former Obama officials who are there in that White House don't want to lose their catbird seat. The, the fact catbird seat the, the fact of power there as well. So I don't think he goes easily, but the clear signs amongst those who want to win elections are it's time to turn the page. The, the fact I love the catbird seat imagery. That's one of my favorite words of the day. Well, that and earlier today, Hammer said he was splendid. The, the fact, so <laughs> that, that, I mean, I'm having a pretty good word day. Uh, word, I, yes. I am. All right. I love the Cat Bertsy imagery. I love the Cat Bertsy imagery. Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, how he handled Ukraine uh, and aid to Ukraine while I was at the Department of Defense is one of actually the most damaging pieces of potential executive action that Trump has teased in a future administration would be to make all federal government officials political appointees or be able to be fired the same way that they are. So what that means, it's an effort in his mind to undo the deep state. But what it would effectively do is allow him to basically eliminate all subject matter experts, all civil servants from the federal government and staff it with his loyalists. I love the Cat Bertsy imagery. That's one of my favorite words of the day. That and earlier today, Hammer said he was splendid. So that's a terrifying proposition. As I know from being at DOD, only a fraction of the folks in the building were political appointees like myself. Most had spent decades in public service through multiple administrations, and that's a good thing. It means they bring expertise yeah. to the table. He's rampantly lying to try to get the results that they wanted, that's indicative of how he views our allies. Um, obviously, Ukraine is not a NATO member, but they do have a longstanding alliance with the organization. He wants to eliminate that at every agency. That Such an important point and good advice. Alyssa Fair Griffin, thank you so much for joining us. Be well. Thank you.